Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. Welcome to Freestyle Friday, where I get to do what I want. Well, I don't know about you, but this has been some kind of journey to how wine is made. I consider myself very knowledgeable about farming practices and winemaking in general. I realized that I also had some misconceptions about some of these. After spending part of July, all of August, and the first part of September 2021 researching and writing these scripts and then recording them to the end of September, I've gained even more knowledge. While I've inserted a comment here and a comment there in each of the episodes, I don't feel like I gave a real opinion of any one process. I'm sure my opinion can be inferred based upon how each script was written and how I present the information, but I wanted to use this episode to bring everything into focus. Like I said in an earlier episode, we don't know how most of the products we use or consume are made. We have a basic idea. We know that raw materials are collected, they are processed somehow, and something is produced. Sometimes that's the final product, but oftentimes it's used to make something else down the line. Every industry has its secrets. Not like espionage secrets, just the things that we don't need to know in order for that shirt, car, computer, pasta, frozen dinner, etc. to be made. We tend to have a trust that the product is safe. We may know or maybe just assume that some of these products are made by someone making very little money in a third world country, or it might be made here by a well-paid person. Why is it different? We have so many ways to make it. There are tons of people out there whose job it is to sell it to us whether it's someone like me or you, the regular consumer. We get caught up in the romance of it. The idea that something magical turns grape juice into adult grape juice. The land is pure and the wine is pure and everyone in the process is happy and well paid. It's a dream. And while my goal wasn't to crush your dreams, that's what wine is, my goal was and always is to be honest with you about wine without being an outright jerk about it. I might make a smart ass aside here and there but I'm always looking to inform and entertain you about wine and other tasty adult beverages. So what's my take on all of this? Did I change my mind on any of it? Not really. I'm still a realist when it comes to wine. Really life in general, but that's not important right now. Wine is a business, plain and simple. How we go about it can be different. I'm as comfortable drinking a mass produced wine as I am drinking a natural wine. As long as neither is flawed and I like it, it doesn't matter. To a point, I'm not down with knowing, knowingly supporting shady wineries, regardless of the kind of wine they make. I just recognize that good quality wine is made using all the ways we talked about the last few months. And it doesn't have to cost a lot too. Conventionally farmed grapes and conventionally made wines have their place. It's okay if you're not down with that. It's okay if you're someone that only drinks biodynamic wines. My contention is that someone that is doing that be true to themselves about everything else. There are compromises we make every day. So drinking bio wine might be non-negotiable, but you have compromise, but you have to compromise somewhere else because there's no alternative. I've had wines from all the ways it can be made and farmed. I've had good and bad from all of them. I've visited dozens of wineries around the world, broken bread with some of them, shared a few glasses of wine. Every single person has been warm and welcoming to me. They all have been reasonable in their approach to wine be it unashamed to use conventionally farmed grapes from three states over and using the best oak chips money can buy to, to following biodynamic farming to a T and doing the least possible in the winery. As long as we can be honest with each other, I'm good with that. The problem is I get to see these things. You don't. The winemaker or owner can let their guard down to a point. I don't come in guns blazing with a crew of camera operators or some kind of hidden camera to catch them doing something evil. If we talk about using pesticides in the vineyard or adjusting the acid of the wine, that's fine by me. The problem for the public is that the wineries have a product to sell, and that almost always requires a story, not necessarily a lie, but something to connect you to the wine. So they encourage that fantasy that they just let things happen and the wine comes out. Yes, many wineries will put up their tech sheets online and have pictures and videos of their operations, promote their guest house you can stay at. Maybe the winery is recruiting volunteers to help with harvest and you'll get a free bottle or two for your efforts. It all ties in with the story and a lifestyle the winery is trying to project. Just don't forget that you're making a decision, oftentimes a less informed decision, but a decision nonetheless to buy that wine. 
Don't think that I'm telling you to feel bad or embarrassed to buy a $10 or less bottle of wine. Do it. Enjoy it. Buy it again. Likewise, don't come across feeling superior that you're drinking a natural wine that costs 50 bucks. You know better than any of us. I personally like to support winers that are, quote, doing it right. That's a vague and frankly fluid philosophy. My first thing is, does the wine taste good? Is it well made? After that, are they doing some kind of sustainable, organic, or similar farming? Cool. Are they low interventionist in the winery? I'm down with that. Being organic, bio, natural, etc. shouldn't be excuses to make bad wine. We have thousands of years of experience. We have modern equipment and scientific analysis to make the best wines that have been ever made. I'm not talking about a by the numbers wine, but excellent wine. With conventional wine, there's no escaping it. From the $4 bottle to the $1,000 bottle or more, when almost 95% of the world's grapes are farmed conventionally, you're going to encounter them everywhere. So many of these wines are wonderful. I don't think it's necessarily bad. However, there's a lot of bad wine being made this way. There's no denying that a lot of $10 and under wine is manufactured. It has diluted, poor quality grapes that have been heavily sprayed and are grown in dead dirt. Then everything possible is done to make it palatable. Many of us in the industry love to rag on conventionally made wine. We'll label it industrial. With that said, it truly can taste good to tons of people. I've been surprised a few times. To be fair, not all of it is like this. But these value wines are going to have some amount of manipulation or adjustments to get, them a, to get, to get a consistent taste from year to year. It's the in-between. A lot of really good quality wine that isn't heavily sprayed or highly manipulated is made. Responsible farming and winemaking happens all over. It may not be considered sustainable, but these winemakers are putting a lot of honest effort into their wines. And these are the ones I like to support. When it comes to organics, I think it's a great thing. There is some flexibility, but there is also a lot of structure. It's a more reasoned approach than biodynamics, or at least compared to the mystical side of bio. It makes a lot of sense in certain parts of the world, especially in a place like Argentina, where it's arid, yet there's access to well water. If there is one type of wine I'm the most skeptical about, it is biodynamic. The wines themselves are fine. I've enjoyed many bio wines over the years and expect to continue to enjoy them. Expect to continue to enjoy them. I think the overall concept of biodynamics is great. What I have a problem with is relying on astrology and other mysticism to dictate the farming and winemaking process. Relying on things that have been debunked by actual science. But hey, I get it. People wear crystals because they believe they have power and it makes them feel better. Cool. Hell, I occasionally use aromatherapy. Not because I think it will magically give me a result. I do it because it makes me feel better. I'll go months not doing it at all, and then I'll do it a few days or nights in a row. I'm similar with music. Sometimes I want soothing music. Sometimes I want soothing music that's industrial or heavy metal. I appreciate those wineries that use biodynamics in the vineyard, especially if they choose to ignore the mysticism parts and concentrate on the farming as responsibly as possible. I've met quite a few that do that. What was the most exciting during this time was learning about regenerative agriculture. Like I said in that episode, it's not that it's really new. I just had not had anyone that I can remember put all, all the concepts into one category. I do think that some of the promises of the proponents of RA are exaggerating a little bit. Some are using scare tactics to get their message out. But I think there is a lot of truth to what is being said. Whether it's the magic pill to cure all of our environmental issues, I don't think there is that one thing that can do it. A combination of things is what's going to be needed, and conviction by governments. Not a dozen or so, but hundreds of governments. I look forward to seeing where this goes in the future. Seeing more wineries gain their certifications in RA. In many ways, I think having an ROC certification will be the best combination of things. Using organics and also ensuring ethical practices is an ideal combination. I hope to visit one of these after they are certified to do an interview and get a first-hand look at it. Sustainable has some great things about it. I knew that it doesn't require organic, but allows a wine grower to be reasonable. You have that flexibility to ensure that you have a crop. What's great is that there is a need to be an ethical business, a focus on the employees. It's not just the vineyard and how the wine is made. I've always been a fan of sustainable. It was, a, it was great to learn more about it. I think the lack of concrete farming and winemaking standards as compared to some of the others could be better. And to go back to regenerative RI, they also have that 
ethical practices. So, you know, between sustainable and RA, and RA is so new that no, I mean, there's only two wineries. I mean, only one winery that actually is RA certified. But between those two concepts, I think that's a really great, really great thing to look for. Now, natural wine. Okay, it's it's one of those things that can drive a sommelier insane. We need to be able to confidently sell a wine to our customers. With the inconsistency of quality in wines having issues with faults, it's hard to get behind the wines as category. Also, a complete lack of any kind of definition or standard really hurts the style. There needs to be some kind of assurance to the public that I'm not going to taste a mouse or, a, or have a slimy wine pour out of the bottle. The thing is, I know that these problems are not in the majority of natural wine, but there's enough that it sows doubt in my mind and especially others. For the most part, I'm more likely to give a natural wine a shot than a lot of other people. But I'm not going to give it a pass because it was poorly made. Well, after I wrote this script, I thought about a way to compare how many wines are made with other things we encounter on the daily. Things like movies, TV shows, music, pictures. All of these things have some form of manipulation. Yes, there are amateur versions that are raw and you see all the flaws. But our consumption of most of the media is created by professionals or people that use professional techniques. What the hell do you think I do? I use Final Cut, a professional video editor. With Final Cut, it's about 300 bucks. I do the same thing the pros do from color correction to adjusting exposure and contrast, white balance, multiple lights. Use a blue screen or a green screen for the video, plus all the little effects I add from time to time. I write a script for each show and use a teleprompter. I don't hide this fact. I do multiple takes when I screw up the words. I use a lovely mic, external audio, uh, recorded instead of the built-in mic on my iPhone 11 Pro. I then import that audio into professional level audio software called Isotope RX-8 Standard, also about 300 bucks. With it, I apply seven effects. Mixing, I convert it from monophonic to stereo. Declip, preventing clipping if I get too loud. Declick, basically what it sounds like. Voice denoise, reduce the background noise for dialogue. So hopefully some of the episodes I recorded earlier tonight, you don't hear the um, dishwasher in the background. De-reverb. There's not much reverb in this room, but there is a little. It makes it sound a little bit flatter. EQ, because only a rare few have a truly melodious speaking voice. <clears throat> I don't, especially right now. I need, need some water. And loudness control, to make sure my final audio levels are compliant to broadcast standards, just in case. I can do all that, or I record my videos like I used to. I and every serious YouTuber do a lot of these things to make our videos better. Photographers and ad agencies Photoshop the crap out of their photos. Music engineers truly engineer the final sound of the music we listen to, especially vocals. We can make just about anyone sound like they have perfect pitch now, even live. And the movies and TV to some extent are the best at combining every trick in the book to suspend our disbelief. All these things are done. You know what? There's no natural movement advocating we do these things the old fashioned way. Why? Because the quality sucks, period. We, the public, demand polished music, film, video, and art. We want it to look and sound perfect. We marvel at the special effects, how great a singer sounds, how great a photograph of a model looks. This last one is about the only one that ever gets mentioned since it's the most well known, especially for making models like thinner than they really are or erasing any blemishes. A lot of people understand special effects in TV and movies, but they really don't know how much is actually there. In addition to all the other audio and visual trickery, Music flies under the radar uh, the most. The point is that just about every wine you drink has been at least guided to a final outcome. Wines that truly were done with zero manipulation are extremely rare. At least a nudge here, a tweak there was done, and most wines are monitored closely and adjusted as necessary. And the vast majority of adjustments in the winery don't involve some kind of synthetic chemical. It's something that is naturally occurring or based on something that is or some kind of mechanical process or thermal process. It's all done in order to deliver a wine that you and I will not only like, but buy again and again, like every other consumable in the world. So hate on the $10 plunk and praise the $50 natural wine all you want. At the end of the day, this is a tasty beverage. Support the wineries that align with your values and be a guide to those that are at the point in their wine journey where they want to explore more than just the mass produced wines be it four bucks or a hundred bucks or more, no matter how many years they've been drinking. My job here, and the one that actually pays the bills, 
is to get the right wine to the right person at the right time. The definition of a sommelier. Sometimes we want that ultra natural soda and sometimes we just want a Coke. If I can get you either one or something in between that you're going to enjoy, then I've built a little bit of trust. And with that trust, I can guide you to the next wine that you'll want or like. Not the one that I want or like necessarily, not unless you ask me what I want and I think you're going to be open to accept that. All right, enough scripted rambling. As someone said on a wine podcast I used to, I used to listen to, drink what you like. I'm here to be your guide. Hopefully we can have the same goal. But if you want to go your own path, I'll shine the light in that direction too. And with that, I'll end the show. You should know the drill by now. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and drink whatever badass wine you want. Cheers. <laughs>